All righty, everybody. Week nine of the NFL season has come to an end. And I'm here to recap what in the world happened in week nine because there was a lot that happened during this week. And first off, we got to talk about Thursday Night Football. It was the most interesting matchup in the world as it has become, you know, with Thursday Night Football is synonymous with matchups that just aren't interesting. And a struggling 49ers team that's just riddled with injuries. They basically got blown out by the Packers. I mean, come on. This was pretty much to be expected, you know, because, I mean, the Packers just had their way with the 49ers. And, I mean, the 49ers are they're not looking too great right now. Devontae Adams, you know, caught a touchdown, had 10 catches. I mean, he's, he was doing great out there. Aaron Rodgers and the company would just continue to cruise on through the season. And as we get to Sunday, you know, with the Sunday games to start, what happened to the Bears? I I have no idea what happened to the Bears. They look ridiculously awful right now. They just basically didn't even try against the Titans. They didn't even try to do anything. And they've lost three straight games now. They've lost three straight. They're five and four. They were at the top of the NFC three weeks ago. They need to get it together. They need to get it together. The Vikings are another team that's pretty head-scratching because they looked awful to start the season. Now they won about three games in a row. (laughs) They've won three of their last four or five games. And they easily beat up on the Lions. So, I mean, you know, there's that. So, it's just like Kirk, Kirk Cousins threw the touchdown. You know, you know he threw a, threw a touchdown, I think. But Dalvin Cook has been playing lights out. I, I swear he had another four touchdowns um, against the Lions. If not, correct me if I'm wrong. But, you know, Dalvin Cook played his heart out. And the Vikings are back in the thick of things, so don't count them out just yet. Meanwhile, out there in Cuba, the Jags started Jake Luton, a, a new quarterback, a rookie quarterback. I have no idea where he came from. Uh, I think he, I think he went to Washington. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I know he went somewhere, but I don't remember where he went to school. It. He didn't do too bad of a job. He didn't do too bad, you know. But the Texans still won the game 27-25. It's a game nobody really cares about. I don't really care for this game. It it happened. It happened. So. Then you have some of the good old NFC East. You know, some good old NFC East rivalry out here. You know, that good stuff. Giants. Washington. It was bad. It was really, really bad. You know, turnovers of plenty. There was a play where the Giants ended up recovering the ball. It, it, it took like 11 years for somebody to come up with it because nobody could, everybody's hands were made of grease. And the Giants are in the thick of things. Now, you know, even though Philadelphia is off this week and, you know, they still have the division lead and whatnot. It could be. It could be that the Giants are getting close to the first place again. So another big matchup for the Giants next week in the division. Should be fun. I'll talk about that game later on tomorrow. Ravens, Colts, one of the probably the best game of the one of the best games of the afternoon. Colts great defense taking on the Ravens terrific offense. And it didn't look you know, it didn't look like the Ravens were going to win this at first, but then you had a phantom interception call that turned this game around that was not an interception. He did Marcus Peters did not have the ball. He did not he didn't even control it all the way to the ground. And then the Colts just stopped they just stopped playing after that. They just I don't know what in the world happened to them. They just stopped after that and they Lose by two touchdowns. Don't worry, Colts. You got some more prime 
time games, big time games coming up the next few weeks. You got to prove yourselves out there, boys. So the Chiefs, you know, sure, you know, they had a little bit of the trouble with the Panthers, but it's the Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes threw another four touchdowns in this game, and there was just enough cushion for the Chiefs to hold on and win the game. Good for them. Still, you know, a force to be reckoned with in the AFC. And they have some big games coming up as well. But we need to pay attention to. So I don't know what in the world happened to the Seahawks, though. The Seahawks defense got. They, they looked awful. Josh Allen was out there slinging the rock. He was out there slinging it. Russell Wilson did not look like an MVP caliber player. There was turnovers aplenty for the Seahawks. Three of them. You know, three bad turnovers in this game. And the offensive line returned to form for the Seahawks. You know, being rough around the edges to where Russell Wilson has to run outside the pocket each and every play. And the score is closer than this game indicated because the Bills blew out the Seahawks. The Bills blew them out. Sure, they only won by 10, but the Bills basically blew them out. This game was over pretty much in the first half. I'm not going to lie to you. In between all of this, though, we have the Broncos and the Falcons. I really have nothing to say about this game, but the Falcons did almost blow a lead once again. You know, if it weren't for the Broncos, you know, just doing an illegal shift and the false start at the end of the game because they were, like, at the 20-yard line, and they had a chance to tie the game up, if that illegal shift didn't happen, this game would have been tied and we would have been talking, you know, ha-ha, Atlanta blew another lead. Meanwhile, I don't get it, I don't get it Chargers fans. You guys just like to be paying. You guys just like to live in pain, don't you? Because there is no way you should have lost this game to the Raiders. You had the game in your grasp. You had the game in your grasp. And, you know, if it weren't for that throw at the very end, and, you and you know, you have to control the ball all the way to the ground, you know, even in the end zone. You know, if you're going to catch it in the end zone like that, Got to keep control of that ball all the way to the end. And if you can't, well, there you go. But the Raiders, Raiders are looking pretty interesting. You know, they have five wins. And they're also, you know, in that playoff hunt and stuff like that. Before we talk about, you know, the two big games on Sunday, you know, in the late window. Let's talk about Sunday night and Monday night. Sunday night was a blowout. Saints whipped the Bucks again. It was the same game as the first time these two teams met all the way back in week one. Basically, like, Tom Brady and company could not do anything to stop the Saints. The Saints were a well-oiled machine. I turned this game off after the first quarter. It was that bad. I don't know what in the world the Bucks defense is on right now. And the Bucks offense could do a damn thing against the Saints. If the Bucks want to be contenders, they gotta put up a better fight than this. This was just rough to watch. But if you did watch Monday Night Football, you'd be surprised. Joe Flacco starting? Three touchdowns? It doesn't matter. The Patriots came in, you know, they looked kind of weak in this game. And they got and they got the W thanks to Nick Folk on a field goal. You know, uh, can't really say much about the Patriots or the Jets right now because the Patriots do not look like a good team. And you know, sneaking out a win against the worst team in the league, eh, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter anyway. The Jets are eliminated from the AFC East. You know, from the AFC East title race, so they'll likely be eliminated for the playoffs soon enough. But anyway, anyway, anyway. Let's talk about these big games at 325 on Sunday. First, gotta talk about 
the Dolphins and the Cardinals. Dolphins had to its Agavailoa as the quarterback taking on Kyler Murray. So this is an interesting matchup for the outset because we know Tua and Kyler Murray faced off once in college. And another, it was a great game. I'm not going to lie to you. What a great game this was. Dolphins, you know, forcing defensive touchdowns once again. You know, they're getting, that defense is getting after quarterbacks. That's the second time in the last two weeks that the Dolphins have scored a defensive touchdown. Great stuff. Kyler Murray can sling the rock. He can run it too. Like, touchdowns were a plenty in this game. It only came down to Zane Gonzalez, though. It came down to a Zane Gonzalez field goal, and he missed it. It's rather unfortunate that he did miss it, but hey, we, we need more games like that in the future. What a great game this was, and I hate that only a small portion of the country got this game, unless you streamed it. Hint, hint, I stream everything. But what about my Dallas Cowboys? As we go into the bye week, you know, there is a lot that needs to be said. There is a head-scratching amount of things that need to be said. Ben Roethlisberger was basically injured in that game. He, he was basically playing on one knee the entire second half. I don't, I don't care if he looked good in the pocket. He was playing on one knee. And the Cowboys, you know, they had this game won. And then the Steelers' offensive might was just too much to overcome. It was just too much. They had this game wrapped up. I'm, I'm serious. With Garrett Gilbert, that's right, Garrett Gilbert at quarterback, due to Andy Dalton being injured, injured and, and Ben DiNucci, you know, just not be very good. Garrett Gilbert played very, very well. I, I'm not even going to fault him. There was an interception late in that game that gave the Steelers another chance come on back and, and win this game. But, I mean, the Steelers, they do not – again, the Steelers just don't look like a team that's been undefeated the entire season. They they honestly should have lost this game. They honestly should have. But if it weren't for, you know, you know – if it weren't for some questionable type plays, you know, later on in this game by the Cowboys, you know. But it was a good game. You know, questionable plays on both sides of the ball, you know. Steelers gave the Cowboys another chance because they got two field, two extra points actually blocked. And it's just like, man. Dumb play calling still exists out here, so who knows? Uh, but the Cowboys go into their bye week, you know, two and seven. Not really surprised at this point that we lost, but it was a good game, much better than that Philadelphia game. That was just awful. If we're being totally honest with ourselves, you know, as Cowboys fans, as true Cowboys fans, just just gotta finish the job next time. That's really all there is to it. Week 10, you know, is coming right around the corner. We are almost there. And I am already afraid because we have another slate of games that just does not look very interesting. It's week 5 and week 6 all over again. And the second half of the season, we are entering the second half of the season now. And as we go along, there are matchups that just looked way more interesting you know, before, now they don't, and there's a lot less marquee games that make sense later on, too, and it does not help that there is a 17 playoff for, you know, both the AFC and the NFC, thus making it a 14-team NFL playoff, so things will get even less interesting down the line because there's more teams qualifying for the NFL playoffs. But what I think we've learned this week is that the Steelers do not look like an undefeated team. They do not. And the Chiefs are gaining on them. The Chiefs are gaining on them. The Bills are gaining on them. Uh, the Dolphins look very, very stingy. They look like they could go to the playoffs themselves. 
do not be surprised about the Bucks. They have all this talent, but what they lose, they lose. And it's not the and it's not the type of loss that you want to have, you know. You need to have pretty losses. You need to have losses that look good, as they say in college football. This was not good. This is the type of performance that we've seen from the Buccaneers twice against the Saints this year and once against the Bears. Looking rough around the edges. They need to get it together. Will the Chargers stop being a factory of sadness, a factory of pain? I don't think so. And I don't know why people are saying, oh, we'll flex this Chargers-Dolphins game in, you know, next week, you know, for Sunday night. No, Chargers Chargers can't win games. They can't win. Stop it. And we continue to ask if the Jets are going to go 0-16. Hopefully, you know, it happens because I think they might be worse than the 2008 Lions. That's just what I'm saying. And finally, are the Bears going to wake up? Are the Bears going to wake up? Because if they can wake up, great. If they can't, oh boy, it's going to be rough. It's going to be rough for Matt Nagy and company. It's going to be rough the rest of the way. But that's it. We'll see you tomorrow for more NFL stuff. And stick around later this week, Friday or Thursday. I don't know which day college basketball preview that's right 2020 season here we go